what I've noticed in uh, having this discussion with you is that any time that I start talking about myself as Jesus, I get a fairly strong projection of emotion, emotional denial about that from many of the people in the audience. And, uh, and I don't want to comment on your own emotions about why you're doing that. Right? What I want to do is comment about my own feelings when that's happening. Because what's happening in this group, more so than almost any other group for me, is that I'm getting very, very strong lower back pain in the, in the bottom there, uh, which is all caused by my unresolved unworthiness issues. So what actually happens when you project that emotion at me is instead of it passing straight through me, it just connects with my unworthiness issues and I just feel more unworthy. Right? <laughs> And so that's something that I'm having to work on while I'm actually talking with you, is just to feel those unworthy feelings that are being, that are, that are being triggered by that projection. <coughs> and that also has the effect of um, sort of closing me up here. And the reason why that's happening is because when I feel the projection from you of denial or disbelief, then I feel like I'm not allowed to say exactly what I want to say. And so there's that other feeling associated with the unworthiness of I'm not allowed to speak the truth to you. I'm not allowed to speak what's in my heart to you. I've got to modify that to suit what you're feeling. Right? So that's still something that comes from my, my unworthiness issues. My unworthiness issues mean that I have a desire to try to make things easier for you. And in the process of doing that, I'm shutting down, like my 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 <coughs> voice is. I'm finding it hard to speak at different times because of the closing up of my voice, because I can't say exactly what I feel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So while I've been having this conversation with you, I've been trying to feel about those emotions and uh, just allowing myself to connect with those emotions. And um, I understand that it's very very difficult for you to accept what I'm saying to you, particularly about my identity. <coughs> right? And I understand that it is hard for you to actually not project those emotions. Mm -hmm. But the more you project them, the more inclined I am to actually stop talking to you altogether and walk out. Can you understand why? Yeah. 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 The reason why is because if I have a sense of worthiness, then I can feel when a person doesn't want to listen to me and I'll say, well, that's okay, You're not, you don't have to listen to me. And so I would leave, straight away. And so that's the emotion I'm having to work through now, is whether, what do I do? Do I continue and have those continued emotions projected at me? Or are you going to own some of those emotions and start looking at the reasons why you're finding it so difficult to believe? And I'm not expecting you to believe. What I'm asking you to do is to own your own emotion rather than projecting it at me. You follow me? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you can do that, then I can stick around and stay, even though you may not feel that I am who I'm say, saying I am. But if you're going to project the emotion at me, then what's going to happen is I will then have to say at some point, well, enough's enough, if I have any sense of worthiness within myself. And then I'd have to say, well, enough's enough, at the moment, a lot of this group is finding it difficult to accept that, and so I'd have to just either decide do I stop talking about that altogether, or do I go? Mm. So that's just something that's happening for me right at the moment. Mm. I'd like to talk about something that's been happening this week for me as well, <coughs> if I can. And a lot of my emotions that I'm processing at the moment are about how my soulmate feels about me. Right? Mm. And I'm finding them really, really difficult. Uh, it's like, the, way, the best way I can describe it is, if you can imagine that you can remember being with somebody for 2,000 years, right? and, you can, and you can feel and remember many of the experiences that you've had together. And then, in this life, the, my worst emotions have been actually to do with separation from my soulmate and from God. That... The, the emotions that occurred in the womb with my, when, my, when I incarnated were so difficult for me that I'm still actually processing through those emotions. And 
a few months ago, I met my soulmate. And, uh, and within a few months, uh, only a few weeks ago, um, she told me many things about, about, that she didn't like about me. And, and then we didn't feel that we could spend time together. We had to deal with those emotions. But the emotions that I feel from that are huge emotions of rejection. And so a lot of them are based around feelings from um, that I've at last met my girl, uh, who I've had a longing for all of this life, and I know who she is, but she doesn't want to know me. And she doesn't want to be with me. And uh, also there's many things about me that she doesn't like. Uh, mostly physical things. Um, so that is, I'm finding that very, very difficult. There's, thing, there's so many things about me that I can't change that she doesn't like. Um, if it was to do with characteristics of the soul, that I can deal with those at the moment, but the other things I find difficult. And so this week I've been uh, probably crying about three or four hours every day about that, about these feelings of rejection. But at some stages when I stop crying, what happens is I get into this short state, space of anger with her. And as soon as I'm in a space of anger, I realise that I'm staying away from the emotion of grief that I, that I need to stay get back into. And so I always try to get back into that emotion of grief. And, and it's been quite exhausting because of that, because uh, it's been pretty constant. And uh, so, so the emotions that I'm working through at the moment are very much related to unworthiness with God and unworthiness with my soulmate, and which also relates to unworthiness with women generally. And so I've attracted in my life many women who have treated me like I'm not good enough for them. You know? When I say many, I've only ever had three relationships, but um, each relationship has, has been this projection of emotion. So... Um, Obviously, the big emotions that I'm dealing with at the moment is this deep feeling of unworthiness, a deep feeling of sexual unworthiness, and a deep feeling that I'm not attractive or not and not lovable. Right? So, and in particular, what it's about is that my soulmate doesn't find me attractive or lovable. Right? So, it's to do with that relationship, and uh, and so. Um, all of those emotions are quite deep within me and have been quite deep within me all my life when I look back at my life. And so they are the emotions that I'm dealing with this week. <clears throat> now, is there any comments you want to make about that? Me or questions? <laughs> no, no, just me too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just when people don't like you. Yeah. And you give them everything that you... Yeah. Want. Well, you feel Do you mind me saying a little bit about your situation? Yeah, okay. um, Lisa's just going through a breakup um, of a marriage, um, and and feeling that's why she's feeling many of the same emotions that I'm feeling a feeling of rejection and unworthiness and those kind of emotions. But they are all actually related to childhood issues, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. yeah. And my, all of mine are related to <coughs> incarnation issues. Uh, the feeling of separation from my soulmate and that I was to blame for that somehow. And the feeling of separation from God and that I was to blame for that. Because my mother felt she was to blame for everything and she still does actually feel that she was to blame for everything. With, um, with your soulmate, mm -hmm. you said there's 16 years difference from the time you reincarnated. Yeah. Why did she reincarnate? Um, because she didn't have to, did she? Yeah, really. She did? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's issues with the joining together of the soul but obviously we plan for her reincarnation anyway because it's really important that uh, the feminine side of the whole thing that began in the first century is actually, is actually dealt with because in the first century there was a lot of denial of the feminine and, uh, and that's caused a lot of problems in history it's also caused a lot of problems with the Christian religious faiths that have uh, followed as a subsequent result. And there's a lot of things like that that we both want to correct. Um, a lot of untruths about women generally, and women in religion, and women's relationship to God specifically. Um, so there'll be a lot of uh, things that we start talking about 
about the balance between the masculine and the feminine. And one of the main things that we wanted to do when we made the decision to return was to actually have the soul union occur in a physical state so that you could see the results of that and, and, and so that you could see the results of what it's like to live in a soul union state mm -hmm. while you're on Earth. So that's your goal, is it? Yeah, to, to actually demonstrate a 20 second sphere soul union state while we're on Earth, which is what God's intention really was in, in terms of your, your future.